Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. And I'm Catherine, co-host and bestie. Well, howdy who there, co-host and bestie. Howdy. All right. We've got an exciting topic today. Yeah, I guess so. It is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Right? Let's get pumped up. Let's get pumped up (laughs) about safety for women. (laughs) Yes. Personal safety for women. Mm -hmm. This is the topic of the day. Because guess what, friends? There's a bunch of sinners out there. That's right. That's what I was just praying about. Yeah, not us, but (laughs) them. (laughs) Those people. (laughs) We are in a crime-filled country in particular in the United States here, and the stats are bad. They are, but we're going to give you some tools, so stay tuned. Do not look away, friends. Just tune in, listen in, and and off we go. I want to talk about our sponsors. We do have sponsors Mm -hmm. uh, for the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast, and uh, tell our listeners a little bit about our sponsorship program please Catherine our humor contributors yes because they've crossed over from a consumer right to a contributor right right and they contribute five dollars a month very simple process just a one-time thing clickety click on you know whether it's the website or even the platform that they're listening to us on go to tracydegraff.com yes and find it that way yeah if I can do it oh my gosh Anybody can do it. Yeah. And you know what? I kind of got a feeling. I have a feeling that there's somebody listening to my voice right now. And you know, you know who you are. You've been saying, I got to do that. I need to do that. I got to support those girls. They need my help. Mm. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Because this Mm. this episode... (laughs) This episode is going to drop tomorrow. Uh, We're we're kind of behind the eight ball lately, just kind of getting them in at the last minute. But we're still consistent. And if you're one of those people that looks forward to Wednesday when we upload a new episode, then you're the type that we're looking for as a humor contributor. Yeah. Somebody who would miss us if we were gone. That's right. (laughs) And we need contributors because there are costs involved with putting the podcast on. That's right. So that's why. Also, I want to say one of our contributors, Joan. Yes. Hi, Joan. Hi, Joan. I'm wearing the socks. Did we got some fan stuff. I know. We and got gifts. We, yeah. So we have these socks. These are really funny socks from a museum that she went to, a comedy museum for Red Skeleton. Yeah. Fun, and right? S- very. Yeah. And so she thought of us. <laughs> she did. Yeah. So, so we I'm accept wearing gifts, them. friends. So if you want to yeah. send us some socks. Our first fan gift. Thing. Yeah. And I fun. love, I love like little things like that with sayings on them. Yeah, I, you I, do. I really love cards like that. I love mm-hmm. socks like that. Yeah. Towels. When we go to gift shops and stuff, and I'm always like, hey, look at that one. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So thank you, Joan, for that gift. And uh, please, friends, do consider supporting this podcast because we're doing God's work here. All right. True. Let's move on. All right. Personal safety for women. Yeah. We've got a couple takeaways uh, from this episode. One, we're going to just talk about ways to be safe, Mm -hmm. different things that you can do to make sure that you're as safe as possible. Right. We're also going to talk about gadgets. Oh, yes. For your own protection. And then finally, statistics. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. A little scary. Uh, And then, as always, we have scripture to share. So stay tuned all the way to the end. (laughs) You'll get some encouragement. Yes. All right. What say you over there, Catherine, about ways to be safe? Well, one way that you can be safe when you're out and about is dress to kill. What does that mean? Right. What does that mean? Well, it means to modify your fashion style just a little bit. So like if you like to go out and wear necklaces or scarves, they say don't do that because a perpetrator can come and choke you with it. That's exactly right. Ooh, I hadn't thought of that. I know. I was like, until you said kill, and then I went, wait a minute. Yeah, it was a play on words. I saw that. Yeah. Also, if you're in high heels or, you know, like a short skirt or even just a tight skirt, even if it's longer and you can't run, you need to be thinking about that. If you really want to wear it, you can uh, perhaps change later. (laughs) Okay, wait. (laughs) I don't think any. It's going to make a difference what I'm wearing and my ability to run. <laughs> oh, and gonna, your ability. Right. Okay. Uh, when you said, if you can't run because of your skirt, and mm. I'm thinking, what if you can't run, period? <laughs> you could. When your adrenaline kicks in. I suppose. Mm-hmm. So you want to give yourself as much of a chance as possible yeah. to um, get away 
from a given situation. Exactly so right. make sure you have proper footwear, proper clothing. And if you don't, then, or if you really just need to wear that, whatever, then just have a plan, it says. And these are done by these expert people like police and say, and they just say, have something in mind, a way to quickly, you know, kick the shoes off or whatever so you can run. Ah, okay. Well, that's good advice. Yes. Uh, the second thing you could do is have your hands free. So perhaps a backpack, have your eyes and ears open to your surroundings. Don't be wearing the earbuds Earpods, and yeah. things like that. I, you know, I really don't because I always feel, and I wonder why, like someone's going to sneak up on me. <laughs> and I cannot stand the, that feeling of not being able to hear around me. Uh, you mean so if you had headphones on, mm-hmm. you wouldn't be able to be aware of your surroundings and therefore I would not know you what's like sneaking that. up behind me. No, because there's a certain person <laughs> in my life that scares me all the time, Tracy. Okay. So if you're new to the podcast, Catherine and I have been best friends for well over 20 years. And over that period of time, I have very often, very often scared her to death. Yes. To near death. Yes. And recorded it to to my entertainment and yours as well, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, because I post them. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, so again, with the hands-free thing, you just, your hands have to be free so that you can use them to fight off your attacker. So that's why. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, take the elevator whenever you can, if you're in a, you know, a building that has stairs. Now, it's funny because I like to use the stairs to get the exercise. Oh. But there are times, like certain parking garages, you know, if I'm alone, I'm definitely not taking the the, the stairs. Definitely going to. Oh, and then when you're in the elevator, stand at the very front by the doors. Again, I don't like that feeling of people behind me. Yeah. But um, it's the best way because if you do feel uncomfortable, you can hurry up and get off right away. Yeah. When the doors open. You know, one thing, I don't know if this is on your list, but I'm going to say it. And then if it's on your list, we'll just skip it or whatever. But when you park your car, make sure that you know where you parked it. Exactly. Yeah, that's on there. There mm-hmm. was um, a time when, my remember when my dad was in the hospital in, in Peoria, mm-hmm. right? And I had gone to visit him and it was a parking garage situation. And so when I came out, I it was dark. I was alone. Mm. and I couldn't find my car <laughs> and I was no looking surprise and looking and um, my niece actually and her husband had passed me and they're they're like ah, hi still lost looking. again Tracy <laughs> but it's a good reminder yeah. that every time you every time that you go to the grocery store or you go to a parking garage or you go to a hospital. Cell I mean, phone lot when you're waiting for someone at the airport. That's one place I'm always Yeah, and cautious. like you had the unfortunate experience when your dad was taken to the ER that somebody bashed in the window and stole your Bible study bag. Mm-hmm. They thought she, she had a bag of things <laughs> that was her Bible study stuff. Mm-hmm. So they thought they were going to be getting, you know, your purse. Because it was a shiny, glossy red mm. bag. Really nice. Yep. Yeah. Well, they did get a treasure, but hopefully the Holy Spirit convicted them. Hopefully. One day, maybe you'll get a, a call and say, I was the one. Yeah. I stole your bag. Right. <laughs> but but it's um to be aware that even when you're in a crisis situation, like you you were taking your father to the emergency room, mm-hmm. and I'm sure the last thing on your mind was somebody's going to steal my Bible study bag out of I the know. front seat of this car. Yeah. Ba- back seat. Oh, even, the back seat. Where it was hidden more. Well, so so there's the tip is mm-hmm. don't leave anything in your vehicle. Put it all in the trunk so it's not visible. Yeah. And then the other thing, which was a tip that I'll mention too, is if you're parking your car at the airport and you're taking a trip, okay, mm-hmm. which is fine to do, remove everything that identifies you. So including your insurance card that's in the glove box, mm-hmm. remove that. Mm-hmm. Remove your garage door opener. Yep. And anything that's valuable in the car, obviously take it take it out. Yeah. But you don't want a, a criminal getting your address and your garage door opener and access to your information. Exactly. Yeah. That is so I true. I had not thought about the insurance card thing. Mm-hmm. Also, n- don't ever park next to a van. Oh, yeah. You know, van. especially a van with no windows. <laughs> 
right. or do you see those vans with there's a i always look at them real funny with a lock on the back of the door you know it's a big silver chrome like lock it's usually because it's a working van they have expensive tools and things in there yeah. but i always think merv the perv <laughs> is in there <laughs> It's not funny. Or they've got like the cage in the back window, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, the next one on the list is fight the inner woman. So what does that mean? That means uh, women, and studies have proven it, they have a more um, sympathetic nature. Yeah, we're nice. Exactly. And we want to help. So when a perpetrator might come up and might be like, hey... I need to, you know, I broke my thumb. <laughs> could, could you help me? <laughs> Those kinds of things. And actually, uh, ser- serial killers, especially, they the most prey upon those that are more vulnerable like that, more sympathetic. Yeah. And that's that's their, uh, what's the word I want to say? Their mojo? No. That's that's, the, their, that's their that's how they roll. That's that's how uh, Ted Bundy did it. Mm-hmm. He like would uh, go on crutches or something and and say, "Oh, I broke my foot, and can you help me just get in the car and get my crutches in the car?" And then boom, yeah. you're dead. Go. I hate to say it, but we have to be this careful. Yeah. So you can't be nice. No more Miss Nice Guy. Right. You got to be a, you know what? Yes. <laughs> also, if you walk from work to home or whatever your your walking routine routine or your driving routine if it's something you do every day change it up yeah and also spot out some so-called safe houses or safe retail places to have in mind ahead of time so that if you're followed you can quickly slip into these places and you'll know that that um it's likely you'll be okay yeah, sounds good. Advises to be paranoid and suspicious. I was a little surprised by that, but it said you can never be too careful. There is a lot of crime out there. So I'm, I'm just saying this part. Uh, the term paranoid makes me think, you know, I don't want to live like that, but I would definitely be suspicious and on guard. Okay, nobody wants to live like this. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to live in a world where these types of crimes happen yeah however in our current world where we currently live yeah um you know in the united states it's a big problem Mm -hmm. especially in the urban areas we we're in the chicago area i mean you know you would love to think that it can't happen to me it can't happen to me here but i think it is wise to assume it can happen to you it will happen to you be on guard you don't have to be um you know crazy but definitely the the one girl that i uh found her name is amber haddock and i'm gonna put a link in the show notes to her instagram page she's a personal safety expert Mm -hmm. and she's also a um, security guard Mm -hmm. anyway she always talks about it as head on a swivel yeah i like that head on a swivel head on a swivel and she doesn't mean sometimes right all the time Mm -hmm. 100 percent of the time so we have to retrain ourselves we don't live in mayberry we live in a war zone Mm -hmm. head on Mm -hmm. a swivel that doesn't mean that you have to be worried about it but you're going to be aware you're going to look around Mm -hmm. you're going to keep your eyes glancing to and fro to and fro and that way you're not going to be um an easy target yeah yeah people will see that you're walking with confidence and that you're alert right definitely okay now when it's too late when you find yourself you've already been attacked or near attack you need to react immediately you run run like to do run 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 i mean you (laughs) run (laughs) get away (laughs) yes and remember this too even if they have a gun pointed at you still run because four out of 100 shots is basically all they can make and they're usually not fatal usually not going to hit a vital organ so that's that's pretty good stats right there. Yeah, and if you can zigzag a little bit, you it, know. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And I don't think people with a gun expect you to run. They expect you to be intimidated by that gun. Right. Right. And then funny, very next thing, stay put. Well, what that means is do not let them take you to the second crime scene, you know, yeah. crime scene number 2. If they're threat- threatening you to drive or go somewhere else, don't do it. 
Right. Uh, because um, you're way less likely than to get out of that situation. I watched uh, Oprah Winfrey back in the day mm-hmm. when she was had her program on and she had a safety expert on and she said, never, ever, ever let them take you to a second location. They will kill you. Yeah. Do not be swayed by their, oh, if you just do what I say, I'm going to let you go. No. All right. They're going to kill you. Yeah. Oh, man, this is, okay, this is a delightful topic. (laughs) Laugh anyway. Okay, you're going to be killed. (laughs) Night-night. Next, um, hit the attacker where it counts. Where does it count? In uh, mm, There, too, mm -hmm. but actually. Oh, between the eyes? In the nose? Eyes, knees. I vote, yeah, knees definitely. Okay. Throat. Yeah. And the groin, of course. Right. Okay. Um, And then try anything and everything. Offer your wallet Just try everything that you can to get out of that situation because fighting helps. Just remember that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've never been in that situation. I hope to God that I'm never in that situation, but I would hope that my first reaction, if somebody were to try to rob me, like to take my purse or something, Mm -hmm. I hope Lord that I would just give it to them and just say, here, take it, you know, or toss it at them or whatever and just run away mm, yeah. and not try to fight for like a thing that you can replace. Yeah. Yeah. You can't replace your life. Give, right. them, give them everything. Mm-hmm. Give, give them all the stuff. Yeah. Just get away. That's it for those main tips on how to, how, how to be safe. Okay. I want to talk for just a second about when we travel. Mm, yeah, that's right. Because we do a, a fair amount of traveling when we go do comedy events. And we're two women traveling alone. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that's so important that I've that I've picked up on is that when you get into your car, so let's say you've had a pit stop, you've gone into the rest area, you've come back out, now you're you get into your car, immediately lock the doors. Yes. Every time. Mm-hmm. So every time you get in your car, don't wait for your car to automatically lock because a lot of cars are equipped with that now. As soon as you start rolling, the doors will lock. No, get into the habit of as soon as you get in the car, lock the doors. Right. Before you even put the key into the ignition, lock Mm. those doors. Yes. And don't sit there on your phone. I do it. I know you do it. Other women do it. What do we do? The first thing we get into our car, we don't lock the doors, so we're sitting there. And what are we doing on our phone? We're just checking Facebook, to see if anybody liked my picture of my lunch that I had. <laughs> or we're just see if I have any messages because I'm so important. <laughs> I got to return this or text. Who's co- yeah, that's, yeah. Who called now? Here's, what do I have to get back no, on? Listen, here's what's important, women. Mm. We are nurturing. We're juggling flaming swords most of the time. Yep. We're, we're handling our lives, our husband's lives, our children's lives, our parents' lives. We've got all this stuff going. Yep. Number one, when you get in that car, lock those doors. Number two, start the car and move. Yeah. Don't sit there and linger. Right. Don't sit there and scroll on your phone. No. When you get home, do that. A lot of women are being, uh, you know. Yeah. You see it all the time. I mean, how about it when you're waiting for a spot in the, let's say, the grocery store and you see that someone just got all the groceries in, they should be ready to go. No, they're just sitting there. And guess why? They're on the phone. Yeah. And perpetrators know that. They do. They look for... Okay, so when when you're um, out and about, the, the bad guy is looking for the weakest link. Exactly. They're looking for a soft target. They're looking for an easy target. Mm -hmm. And they want to find that easier target. Right. So are they going to, you're not going to give them a chance to look for an easy target. If you're head on a swivel and then you get in that car, you lock those doors, you start that car and you leave. Mm -hmm. Done. Done Donezo. Yeah. 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 It's scary to think about how often we are on the road, you know, and stopping at, um, like sometimes have to stop at a hotel on the way. And if we're not watching our surroundings, you bet someone else is watching us, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Scary. Yeah, you have to be. And you know, um, I have some new gadgets since we're, we're going to segue into the next uh, bullet point, which is gadgets mm-hmm. for safety. Yep. I bought some new gadgets. Oh, you did buy them already? I bought Ooh. them. Yes. What did you get? I purchased an alarm for the door. Okay. So when you travel and you go into a hotel situation, mm-hmm. okay, you can place an alarm on the door so oh, that that's if, right. if yeah. anybody come, tries to come in from the outside, even though you've got the padlock locked, right? Mm-hmm. There was a woman 
who uh, had recommended this, and she had been assaulted in a hotel because some bad guy that she met in the bar, and she turned him down for, like, you know, drinks or whatever. Well, he somehow got her name and, mm. and what room she was in or whatever, and he went to the desk, and they gave him a key oh, to the room. That's crazy. And she was assaulted inside the room. Wow. And they showed a videotape. They had videotaping of the hotel employee giving the key to this guy. I can't believe that. Gosh. Well, Usually happened. they're pretty strict, you know. Well, anyway, this woman said, it doesn't matter. No one should be coming into your room. Mm-hmm. So this uh, alarm will sound a very loud noise and hopefully scare them off. Yeah. And wake you up if you're asleep. Okay. The other thing I bought for the hotel room mm. is a little sign that says service dog in room oh because i want somebody to think that i'm a marine Mm -hmm. with ptsd Mm -hmm. and i don't want them coming anywhere near my room you know yeah so i've got service dog in room i want them to think that Mm -hmm. and it's a little laminated sign that you can order online and you put it on your doorknob so now you've got the alarm on the inside and you've got the service dog in the room and then the other tip was the boots yes the boots (laughs) The, the the construction boots yes that you put outside like you're a traveling marine with a service dog mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the persona or yeah or you're that, a guy that's in construction and you're you know got big big, big and, feet you know so you're now a man I have to find myself some boots Ron actually had some and he wore them in Tennessee you know to do Dave's uh Dave and Angie's uh, home and he left them there and oh. he, he told Dave just throw them out because they're old Oh, well, Kenny's got some. Oh, good, good, mm-hmm. good. Hang on to him. Yeah. So, and you want the boots to look like, you know, yeah, the real deal. Well, yeah. And they're sitting outside the room right. because they're so smelly and filthy. Right. You know? Right. Mm. I, and so I'm not saying that those are, like, it's not a big deal, right? You These are just three things that you can do. Mm-hmm. But you keep yourself aware. And every time you go, you just pull out this little bag. You get your little stuff out. Yeah. And at least you have a layer of protection there. Yeah. True that. And maybe somebody would be like, you know what? I'm not going to mess with that guy. (laughs) Those big feet. (laughs) Looks like he's probably a killer. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Um, Well, what other gadgets do you know of? Okay. Gadget wise, I found some stuff online that I did not know they had. Yeah, same. Okay. I can't wait to see what you have. Well, these are more in, in the line of like jewelry. Okay. This yeah. is jewelry. Mm-hmm. Yep. One is called, um, well, one thing is called a birdie personal safety alarm. Have you heard of that one? I have. It's not jewelry, but it's like a keychain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, I'll, I'll put the link to this whole thing in, the, in the show notes, but idea. it's basically just a big, loud, blaring sounding alarm Mm -hmm. that will hopefully scare away a perpetrator and give you time to get away from them. Okay, so there's that. Then there's a stuff called Invisiware Smart Jewelry and Accessories. Okay. And it's basically kind of like a push button. So you push it. Oh. I think you push it twice. Yeah. And it alerts five people, whoever you want to text. It sends an automatic text of your um, GPS coordinates where you are. Okay. So let's say, for example, that you have um, you have alerted uh, on your Invisis, Invisiware smart jewelry, it, the text goes out. Mm-hmm. So now Kenny and, and then four other people or whatever, they have the information. Oh, no. She she forgot about the boots. <laughs> she didn't put them out. <laughs> yeah. And, and it alerts your loved one to hopefully they're going to call the cops and send them to where you are. Mm-hmm. Then there's a... A similar thing called a flare smart bracelet. Uh, it's oh, a, yeah, it's so interesting. The, these things. It's a it's a wearable personal safety device, but it also acts as an emergency lifeline, and it provides three different exit strategies. So, in a crisis, you can press the panic button, so that sends the message okay. to your five people. You can also set up your bracelet to send this information to nine one one. Okay, directly. Mm-hmm. I believe you have to pay for that one, though. Uh, another great thing about Flare is that it will make a fake phone call to you to give you an out oh. in an uncomfortable situation. So, let's say you're sitting there and you're talking yeah. to somebody, and you're Murph realizing. Yeah, you're realizing, like, I just want to get out of this. Mm -hmm. You can somehow press this bracelet and your phone will ring. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Another little gadget is the, I don't know if if I'm saying this right, Sabre, S-A-B-R-E, Sabre. Okay. 
pepper gel. Oh, it's a gel. It's a gel. So it's sticky. Yeah. That's nice. It's a gel. So it's like pepper spray, but it's a gel because with pepper spray, you run the risk of it brain blowing spray in, yes, into your right, face. Right. Or yeah. Elsewhere. I've also heard that wasp spray is even Oh, I think we talked about this before. It's even uh kind of more effective because yeah. it can go further. Yeah, it can. Yeah. So yeah. wasp like because it's yeah. made to go up like toward your soffits and so forth. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um stun gun and flashlight is mm-hmm. another little gadget. Yep. And there's an app for for your phone that can also become like a, a safety like a like a button you know what I mean okay. so you get the app you press the button and automatically five people are texted so you don't have to wear the jewelry you can just do the app okay yeah pretty cool all right well I found some things too and one I definitely want to remember to have this in the show notes I'm not going to go over this entire thing because it's it's a lot but it's called Defender Ring and yes it is a place that sells Um, their items but I will say this was an excellent source it's called 10 best self-defense weapons for women in 2023 and it gives not only um, what they suggest but it gives an overview it gives pros and cons nice and then functionality so it tells you uh, what its function is why why is it so effective how is it so effective um and then it'll answer a general question. Are personal alarm, for in this example, keychains, good self-defense weapons for women, and so on. And it, it was excellent. But it's too much to go over right now. I mean, I could go over some of the gadgets, but you know, all the pros and cons, no. We'll, we'll definitely link that in the show notes. One of the things I hadn't thought of, but now I just did, is young women. Mm-hmm. If you're in a bar... Yeah, where um, drinks are being served, Mm -hmm. make sure that you are not drinking from anything that you don't open yourself. Exactly right. Well, yeah, the bartender will usually open it, but you watch it from the moment it leaves that bartender to when it gets into your hand. I believe they even have something that you can cover your drink with. I'm going to Google it right now. Hmm. I, I'm pretty sure I, I heard of something like that. I wish I had thought of it ahead of time. Well, yeah, just don't ever leave. Oh, yeah, here it don't is. Don't turn your back on your drink, period. Yeah, this is so sad that this is a reality, but it's called a nightcap cover scrunchie. It's a reusable drink spiking prevention scrunchie. So it basically goes over your cup mm-hmm. and a straw can stick out of it, but it doesn't allow anybody to, ac- you know, to, to drops access. in the straw. Right. Right. Well, they can't access your drink. They, I mean, they the straw, it's going to be hard for somebody to get something into your straw. Mm. But if your drink was just wide open yeah. and there was nothing covering it, yeah. someone could distract you and, and, then, and plop, then throw plop, something fizz, in there. Fizz, yep. Yeah. And this one was on Shark Tank. Oh, I yeah. always like that. I know. All right. Well, some gadgets that I saw are so cool. One is a, it looks exactly like a cell phone. Actually, I can't even tell the difference, but it's actually a disguised um, stun gun. Oh, yes. And so how effective that would be, right? Because yeah. here it looks like a phone, but not, no, it's a stun gun. There is a sting ring rechar- rechargeable stun gun. So the bulk of it is in the palm of your hand. And then the ring part is the part that, you know, you're going to you're going to sting the person or stun the person rather. Um, I, I like a lot of these, you know, um, inspector gadget type things. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways that a fake pen can be used. There's tactical steel like, um, uh, blades or things that you could shove up someone's nose. And, you know, if it goes up the nose and into the brain, you're causing some big damage. Yeah. There. <laughs> like, good night. <laughs> My dad had told me that years and years ago. Um, there is now I've seen this in several different things a cat keychain self defense uh metal like like a knuckle weapon they're illegal I don't care guess what it's illegal to hurt somebody it's illegal to attack somebody so how do you fight crime with crime so if it's illegal um I don't know well, it's a really it's it, it's a keychain and it's it's like the shape of a cat but it is <laughs> definitely a, a weapon 
Uh, I, I would say, though, um, be mindful of what your laws are. I know each one of our states in the United States has various laws yes. for conceal and carry mm-hmm. and for pepper spray and all of that. Find out what the laws are in right. your community and do follow the laws. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can <laughs> don't, don't listen to Catherine or on that don't. One. Don't listen to her. Fight for your life, right? If you have to. That's right. But don't put yourself in that situation. Just do the best way that you can and do follow the laws. I think it's a good idea. Mm. Just saying. Well, I say if you could get this little cat <laughs> keychain. It's a cat and all you have to plead okay, is, oh, cat. I thought it was just a cat. Yeah, it's a kitty cat. There are, like I said, blades that are, um, they, they look like a pen. You open it up and it becomes a blade. There are, now this says it's legal. It is a, it's called a Berna Kinetic non-lethal gun. I don't know why we don't all have this, and especially the police. And I guess more and more are going to be using them. But it is a projectile, like, gun that shoots plastic bullets. Enough to, it can shatter glass, but it's not going to be fatal. But it will, but it can shoot 60 feet. Hmm. So it will definitely hurt somebody who is not maybe right next to you, but you want to get them away while you, you know, get them off your back or whatever the case might be. Um, there's also, now this is really neat. It's called a um, open point ring. Mm-hmm. So it it looks like a gold ring or maybe you could get silver and it has almost like this. It almost looks like a tiny, like it could be a wave, mm-hmm. um, but it's actual a point and you can really hurt somebody with that because it's got this sharp, this sharp point. There's oh, an, wow. I'm looking at it right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's basically a blade. It is. Now there's another ring that has a little ball screwed on top of it if you take that if you unscrew the little ball Mm because it kind of looks like a um, stud earring and if you unscrew that there's a blade under it almost looks like the end of a very sharp pointy screw wow and that also is very very inconspicuous and something that you can be prepared with um, what else? Okay, I see on a lot of sites, uh, Kubaton. I'm not sure how to say it. Kubaton, Kubaton. But that's basically, it's like a little rod with these two kind of like prongs that stick out. And if you hold it in such a way, again, you're doing like a, like a scratching, uh, very sharp edge thing with that too. Interesting. Yeah. And believe it or not, flashlights are still a good weapon because you can you can um, blind somebody with it if it's in the dark. Downside to that is it's bulky. Even the small ones, they can be bulky and cumbersome to put in your purse or, or whatever. Um, what else? Now, pepper spray. Uh, again, you have that issue of if it's spray, sometimes it'll spray everywhere but on the Mm -hmm. attacker or whatever but it is it is something that you can use it is effective when you know at many times they say that the best things they save for last it's still a knife a knife is definitely uh, a very and it, it gives all the reasons why it's a very good thing that most women should have in their purse or yeah yeah it's scary because it is going to really harm somebody more than any of these other things that I've mentioned. And now they acknowledge that having a gun is, you know, it's, it's controversial. It's also illegal in many states, but it is the absolute number one um, uh, safety net that one can have. Well, if you do happen to live in a community where you can carry a weapon, Look into it if that's something that you feel like would enhance your own personal safety as well as the safety of others, um, regardless of what the opinions are on that issue, on the gun issue. I mean, just follow the laws, but hey, if you're comfortable with getting the training, that's the main thing, I think, with a gun is that you have got to make the commitment then to be trained and to constantly improve your skill. Yeah. This Amber Haddock, who I'm going to reference in the show notes, she carries 
100% of the time every single day. Mm -hmm. And she shows a lot of different ways of how to, like how to go use a public restroom when you're armed, Mm -hmm. right? How do you, you have a certain type of a belt, you have to unhook it, you put your weapon safely on you know, wherever you put it, Mm -hmm. you use your business, do your business, and then you put it back together. I mean, she has all this different stuff. Yeah. And you can even take lessons on that gun that I told you about with the plastic bullets, Mm -hmm. because it, I mean, to me, it looks like a real gun. Um, I mean, it's shaped like one and and all the stuff, but people who really know guns, I guess, would be able to identify it as yeah, whatever. But um, you could take lessons for that as well. And I would, I think that's a really good thing to have. This plastic bullet thing. Well, it seems like you would want options, right? Mm-hmm. You you would hope that you would never have to use any of these things. Yeah. You know, you want to yeah, right. give yourself the best shot of not being a victim. Best shot, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. I mean, I mean, unintended. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you definitely want to give yourself options in those situations. And I think awareness is one thing. And then training is a whole nother thing mm-hmm. because you can become trained as a, as a, as sure. a personal safety, you know, self-defense course yeah. that you can take. Um, Every single time we do a podcast on something, I always think <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. And like certain <laughs> things like the minimalizing. Oh my gosh, I did it. And then I was like, no. <laughs> she got rid of all of her stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, so she's funny. Because I'm thinking, back. yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But <laughs> who knows? Well, I think what we're trying to bring here today in our in our little world, in our little, you know, podcast world, is just give you some awareness and give you some ideas. Yeah. And the reason we're doing that, I'm going to give a little bit of um, some statistics here. Yes. Please do. Okay. Well, we're going to start with some 1.9 million women are physically assaulted annually in the United States and 15% to 25% of all American women will report a sexual attack or rape at some time in their lives, according to studies um, conducted by the Justice Department. So that's a legit... It's horrifying. It is horrifying. And it is... Very unfortunate. um, It's a reality, though. I hate that. Those stats are our stats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I want to just say this about that. Yeah. Right? In terms of assault, mm-hmm. in terms of um, a crime against yourself, right? If you're in a domestic situation where somebody is mistreating you, do the best that you can to get out of that situation. I have no idea if somebody can hear my voice that is in that kind of a situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But please know that there's support out there. There are a lot of hotlines. Yes, please reach out to some of them Mm -hmm. because you're worth, you have value. You have worth. The Lord created you in his own image and you have value and true worth. And no one should be putting their hands on you. Right. No one should be forcing you to do anything. Yeah. I, you know, over and over when I was doing the research, most crime, most of the attacks are domestic. Someone they know, most of them. And that was like all across the board. So uh, there is a website, I forget now what it's called, but it's um, an organization against domestic crime. Mm. And so you can look to that as well. Uh, yeah, good point. I, I like it when, I, when you know, you're driving along the highway and you'll see billboards for support for people like that. I'd much rather see, I'm glad to see that than some of the other billboards that are disgusting. Well, and, you know, I'm not minimizing the um, almost like the situation that women find themselves in. It's it's a very tragic situation if you're in one of those relationships where a man or, or a woman, I mean, anyone yeah. is putting their hands on you or abusing you sexually, abusing you physically, abusing you emotionally, verbally abusing you. Right. Um those kinds of situations could be very hard to get out of. There could be children involved. There could be finances involved. You could, it could be where you look like there's no way for me to get out of this, but please reach out to these organizations yeah. that provide the kind of services that maybe will show you a path Yeah. to a better, yeah, better yeah. life. Yep, yeah, definitely. All right. Okay. Well, some, these are just like 16, they, they're saying shocking facts um, that reveal the horror behind um, gender, What's it called? Gender-based violence. That means against females. Okay. One in three women, that's a lot, 
uh, worldwide, this is worldwide, have experienced physical and or sexual violence in their lifetime. Globally. Wait, wait, wait. One out of three? Yeah. That's a lot of people. That's what I was saying. And you know why that is? It's because they, we are the weaker sex. We are vulnerable. Yeah. It's just a fact. Mm Mm-hmm. That's true. I hate that. I know. All right. Globally, as many as 38% of murders of women are committed by a male partner, 200 million women and girls have experienced female genital mutilation and cutting. I was very surprised about that, and perhaps I'm naive in that, I guess. Each year, 15 million girls are married before the age of 18. This is abuse, too. That's why it's under there. Mm -hmm. It is estimated that up to 10 million children are victims of child sexual exploitation. Also, school-related gender-based violence means that one in four girls say that they never feel comfortable using a school bathroom. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's pretty telling. Uh, between 80 and 100 million girls are missing from the world's population. Victims of gender-based uh, infanticide. Infanti- I can't say it. Infanticide. Infanticide. Mm-hmm. Femicide. Malnutrition and neglect. Femicide. <laughs> I don't know what you're reading. <laughs> I don't either. Okay. But it's on there. Okay. As many as 150 million girls worldwide are raped or subject to sexual violence each year, usually by someone in their family circle. Lord, help us. I know. I don't know what an honor killing is, but that's in here. Oh, that's like different cultures. I want to say like in the Middle East, they have like if the if there's been dishonor brought against the family like let's say that the girl had um gotten pregnant she's not married that type of thing i wondered if that's what it meant because it says there's five thousand reported every year around the world oh here's here's one too that we i would want to mention domestic violence is a global problem global that affects 35 percent of women worldwide so that's a big huge percentage uh, 137 women are killed by their partner every or family member every day. Uh, women between the ages of 15 and 44 are at a higher risk of rape and domestic violence than cancer, car accidents, malaria, or being injured in a war. That's worldwide. So those th- that's some staggering statistics and some a slap of reality, really. It also says that So femicide is gender-based killing of women Mm -hmm. as well. It says that some people think that high-income countries are not really affected by that, but it says that it couldn't be further from the truth. 70% occur in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, that's... All right, now I'm thoroughly (laughs) depressed. (laughs) This is supposed to be a fun podcast, Catherine. Well, we had to do this with the safety. We right? did. We did. Yeah. Uh, and for more information on the statistics for women, I, I would suggest to read it. There is a website called um, Sanctuary for Families and Gender Violence. And it's it's staggering. And yeah, it's not funny. But there's a lot of information on there. If there's someone that you know that you suspect might be, you know, getting abused, you may want to. Well, and here's the thing: empower yourself. Yeah. Look at those statistics, but don't look at them from the viewpoint of "woe is me." Look at it from the viewpoint of "I'm going to empower myself." Yeah. I'm going to empower myself proactively so that I'm not a victim. I'm going to stand up for myself. I'm going to walk with confidence. I'm going to park in a well-lit area. I'm going to give myself options in the event that something goes down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep my head on a swivel. I'm going to have my little gadgets and my stuff. Yeah, I think that definitely walking with confidence and making eye contact, showing the person that's passing you by that you see him or her, even her, and you're aware of them. And you um, have a presence about you that's not going to be easily uh, intimidating or right. intimidated and that you're not that vulnerable. That's right. Speaking of having confidence, let's look at our scripture. Yeah, let's, let's do that. <laughs> Please. Uh, Joshua 
chapter 1, verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And then we also selected 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So there it is, friends. Mm-hmm. You know, And uh, the call to action <laughs> from today's episode is, is just be aware. Just take something out of what you've listened to us talk about and then do it. Yeah. You know, even if it's just that you're going to start locking your door when you get into your vehicle and take off and don't look on your phone. Yeah, don't have your head looking down uh, at anything. Your phone, your feet. Yeah. Uh, You know, some people just do that. They walk with their heads down. Yeah, Don't do that. and check all the show notes because we've got we're going to put some resources there, and we hope that you have not <laughs> only enjoyed this episode. I hope so. It wasn't as funny as some no, of ours. no, because it's not a very funny topic. But I think it's it's um, important. So we, yeah, definitely, we, we bring you the stuff, friends. Uh, <laughs> we bring the stuff. Here the it important comes. Stuff. <laughs> all right. Well, you've been listening to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm still comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm still Catherine. See you next time.